Welcome to this edition of Great Books, a lively discussion of a selection from the canon of exceptional literature. Here's your host, Jack Hatfield. Welcome. Thanks for joining us for the Great Books Show. I'm Jack Hatfield. Our panel meets monthly to discuss great works of classic and modern literature. Today we're discussing The Rape of the Lock by Alexander Pope. David will introduce the work. David? Today's great book is Alexander Pope's heroic comical poem, The Rape of the Lock, first published in 1712 when Pope was 24. His early writings and satires earned him friendships with Jonathan Swift, John Gay, Joseph Addison, Richard Steele, and other English luminaries of the day. His most famous poem, The Rape of the Lock, is a mock epic. It's a satire of contemporary mores, elevating a trivial incident. A young woman rejects a noble suitor for cutting off a lock of her hair to epic proportions. That's epic, as in The Odyssey or Paradise Lost. Pope's references are often lost on modern audiences, but it's a fun romp full of quotable lines, wit, and snarky commentary. Jack? Thanks, David. Um, this is a satire of a uh, certain time and place. Is there more to it than that? I'd hope so. Well, what? <laughs> well, the satire is that uh, it's a trivial incident, and it's made into this huge conflagration, including supernatural creatures and armies and uh, trips into the underworld because somebody cut off a lock of a girl's hair. So uh, it's, it talks about people making a big deal out of something that's relatively trivial. But satires always have a reason for being and he's attacking some of the social conventions of the time and he's making a point and he's just doing it in a funny way. So uh, I think he has a valid thing to attack because people did make a big deal about the actual event of a girl getting a lock of her hair cut off at a party. And that, and that, I think, is part of the answer to your question, because that's, that's a perennial human characteristic, um, to take things that have some connection with, some, some symbolic or conventional connection with one's worth or status, and to invest it with this great importance that it really doesn't intrinsically have. And that's, and that's, a, and that's, a, that's a universal and timeless characteristic of, of, a, human, of human beings. I had a problem <clears throat> uh, distinguishing what was the colloquial convention of the time and what is hyperbole because uh, we can see it in our modern context but to call cutting off uh, a lock of hair a rape okay that's pretty serious but was the term used as just a mere violation um, or was that title even satirical that's interesting I, I, I thought it meant abduction or taking away from like the rape of Lucretia, like the, like the rape yeah. of Lucretia, or the rape of the Sabines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wasn't uh, just sexual. Yeah, in, in those days, so. right? What about other themes that in there about, for instance, women? I mean, that, what, women's what, vanity. Women's vanity is that uh, not just women's vanity, but the fact that men were so attracted to women who were beautiful that women needed to spend all this time decorating their faces and her yeah. hair yeah. in order to get attention. And that still happens today. Now the, the main uh, character is Belinda, and she's the one that had her hair cut. What do you think Pope's stance was against her or for her? I mean, what, what was his opinion of her? Get over it. Get over it? Get over it. <laughs> I think he was saying she was a woman of her time. And, what? and that at the time there was a great deal of emphasis on how you looked and if someone attacked how she looked one it's a personal violation somebody coming up and cutting your hair and two it makes her less beautiful <laughs> Do you want me to shave your head? <laughs> We're different between shaving head. Or take a yeah, lock. Just taking a lock. You take a lock. But, <laughs> but would that make front page headlines as he seems to think? Uh, or he pretends to think? I think he pretends to think. It's yeah. a satire. Mm -hmm. So he, he's. 
but she was flirtatious too. He was he was, was commenting on that. Too. Yeah, right. Yeah. Of course, that was her job. Right. That's her exactly. Job. Yeah. That's, that's what her, she that's had groomed herself yeah. for. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought it was very interesting because she turned from this light-haired, or bubble-headed, into a, you know a real raving loony. Yeah, she really went after everybody after yeah. that. That's did anybody get? I mean, I, I, did anybody get a sense of what actually happened during that melee? I mean, was it a physical melee? I mean, people were lunging oh, at one another. Yeah. It seemed to. It's. I mean, I, I couldn't tell whether Pope. This was Pope's hyperbole. What whalebone corsets were being broken and yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. I mean, was that was that hyperbole or was that? Act, I mean, did he mean us to understand that that actually happened? It, if you read it, it says she slayed him with a glance, or yeah. she threw snuff at him and he sneezed, and that was the depiction of the actual battle, right? So I, I think he just meant that there was this male-female thing going on, and people were all upset and yelling at each other. Well, I think it, it's his application of the, uh, uh, of the classical battle in heroic literature uh, brought to uh, the, the silly um, event where her corset snaps or uh, she throws snuff at him. Okay, but the pin, she took her bodkin out and the pin <laughs> yeah. had been <laughs> passed down, passed down. the generation yeah. <laughs> and once right. it was part of a whistle. <laughs> Wasn't it a sword or something? Yeah. Some kind of weapon sword, at first? Yeah. A sword. And then yeah. it became yeah. a whistle. A whistle. You know? yeah. And then it became a pin. And this was the most fearsome weapon in this in this argument, so I, I, I don't think anybody got seriously hurt. I, I didn't even get the feeling that there was pushing and shoving going on. It was just people being very upset at each other. I, th I think Pope was trying to make the analogy with, oh. with you know, uh, ancient Odysseus, literature. And heroic, Odysseus, heroic, heroic. Telemachus coming in and slaying all the you, you, suitors. You, you said it was yeah. male and male versus female. But, you know, uh, Clarissa who gave this kind of morality speech toward the, after uh, Melinda went wild, then she, uh, Clarissa stepped in and said, that's kind of stupid. She didn't say it quite that way. But so was it, and then after that, the melee started, I thought. Yes, after that. Yeah, so it wasn't started. just male, female, it was. Well, nobody listened to Clarissa. Clarissa. I thought they did. But I was it, well, the, the Baron did because she's the one who gave him the scissors. Yeah, she, she gave him mm -hmm. the scissors. Yeah, yeah. She, she instigated so, it. Yeah, she was an instigator. Yeah, but then later on, she kind of came up and, and tried yeah. to, to get everyone back on track. But the lock is gone. She yeah. was the one. If it wasn't for her passing the scissors on, mm -hmm. we would not have this tale. We might could have gotten it someplace else. That brings up why did Pope have her both instigator and uh, ameliorator. So yeah, yeah conciliator. Yeah. So both. Um, I thought that was strange. Yeah. Right? Because if she hadn't given the Baron the scissors, the locks never would have gotten cut. Well, but he had been making plans to do so. Right. Yes. So it wasn't it wasn't entirely how we how we intended to implement those plans, you know. What you, I wondered whether Clarissa had actually been a co-conspirator, uh -huh. an unindicted co-conspirator in this thing. <laughs> that it wasn't that it wasn't just it wasn't just she just happened to be there and knew what he wanted. And, uh, yeah. I thought maybe she might have been <clears throat> jealous of how beautiful Belinda was, right? Could be. She certainly seems to hold court. I mean, she's she's certainly a paragon of beauty in this poem. The center of it. I read it. I, I, I it was like. Pope was trying to make a statement against women of that time. And then he kind of reread it, maybe, and, and he goes, maybe this is a little too much. And that's why he shoved in the, the uh, Clarissa. Moralizing speech at the Moralizing end. speech and saying that. Yeah, that's an, inter that's an interesting question. I couldn't figure out whether he was, I mean, he certainly, he certainly thought the excesses, and of course, this was written for a specific occasion, so he had, to, so he had something controlling and constraining the, the, the structure, uh, the, the, the point of it. But I, I, and he certainly was, uh, it was, um, was painting these things with a great deal of hyperbole. But I wasn't so sure that he was, that he really felt that, that the conventions themselves were all that stupid. 
um, that I mean that that he wasn't that it, it was gentle satire that it wasn't it wasn't savage satire that you know that's a slash and burn kind of thing right. that um, you know that that this was that okay you know this is kind of how we are it has some silly aspects especially when you take it this far but it's okay it's basically okay. but I couldn't I couldn't decide I, between that and whether he had, in fact was was actually uh, deeper I was just, uh, satirizing it at a more deeper and more dark level yeah. yeah. I wondered how he fa- fared. Remember, he's four, four foot, foot eleven nine. or something. Six, 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 four six, foot six. He's very small, right? And a hunchback. And it, he pointed out in the the play in the poem that the women wanted to go after the good men, looking guys, the yeah. good looking guys, but also those who had stature, right? Mm-hmm. And I was wondering if he was looking at it from an outsider. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I That's kind of got to lose Latrex. Mm-hmm. feel out of that. That's why maybe he lampoons the uh, the big makeup scene where oh, she's sitting yes. at her toilette. Yeah, that's, that's a great uh, yeah. stanza there. Uh, where he talks about the combs and uh, the ivory and the tortoise shell. Right. And, and he said it was like an altar. Yeah. Right? And right. he used the word yeah. priestess mm-hmm. there. You, you yeah, his, his, uh, the her maid was a priestess. beauty was the god or, or goddess <laughs> that was so important. And and the and her um, her adversary, the Baron, also had an altar that he sacrificed to the gods. Right. He yes. put all his yeah. his old love letters and things he had ha- yeah. a glove that, that he had yeah. 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 from his old. Full yeah, yeah, full, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a little much. Yeah, right. Yeah, I get the smoke carrying them to the heavens. Yeah, right. and, yeah, that's right. Okay. We talked about the women in here, um, and um, what about the men? How did he? Well, how did he portray the men? Well, let's talk about that scene with the Baron, okay, where he's offering, making an offering to the gods, hoping that he gets a lock of her hair. He was burning all the other mementos he had from all the other women yeah. that, that yeah. presumably his, he lost his heart to in the past. You know, so he, he's being pretty inconstant there, that, that this is the new lady of the week. You know, and he's going to go after her hair now. But you know, there were other women he was chasing before that. But but he but he had collected all these things. Yes, he did. And he was burning them all at once. I mean, this woman was special. Uh, I okay. mean, getting you know, getting the lock of this woman's hair was a big deal. And he kept deal. it and flaunted it with a ring. Yeah, yeah. with the ring, he was going to put it in a mm-hmm. diamond ring. Yeah, he said, "I'll wear it," you know, mm-hmm. until it disappeared, it went flying up to heaven or wherever. <laughs> but it also said that he wanted to be famous because of it. Oh. Right, and he was so happy that his name would go down in history because he took this lock of hair, you know, very satirically, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but well, he was doing it for two reasons. I guess that was his the object of his quest. Yeah, but when he got the hair, he was also saying it doesn't matter how he got it, whether it by, was by fraud mm-hmm. or force yeah. or, or trickery. It said, it said that nobody, so nobody, he wasn't going after her. What would he think she would do after he Good cut point. the hair off? I mean, I think she was a little willing. Yeah, yeah there was that. So he okay. had some idea that she was not going to be totally, you know. A, I, I think he misread her by taking the hair. Oh, did and, you? And he said that Judging from the from hair from some place that you could see, she would have preferred if it was like. It wasn't obvious that he had taken the hair. And no, there was that line in it, right. which made you think that maybe she would have been willing to go along with some of this if it wasn't so obvious that he was taking this her beautiful lock one. of her hair. Yeah. Her favorite lock, but also that it was not only her favorite lock, but it was it was an important part of her accessories. I mean, it framed her neck. The, the two locks and, framed yeah, her neck and in a with certain one way. gone. The she's other one is just yeah. Asymm- yeah, she's asymmetrical. Right. Did one of the other women, I don't know if it was Clarissa or not, said, you know, I'm kind of looking at my relationship to you. Now you could be burnt toast, which meant someone who had toast. been toast of to the town and now has has got this yeah. slur against her yes. that would bring her down. And, yes. Um, I think that was the Lespris, her friend? Could be. Her friend, yeah. Okay. She said she said if, uh, it's, it's going to be hard to defend you. Yeah. She said, essentially. And, and, you know, she was saying this is terrible. But what was so terrible about it, she gave a big speech, too. Mm-hmm. And the gist of it was that it was terrible because it would destroy her reputation. Right. I mean, it wasn't that it it did anything else. It was just, well, people wouldn't think you were pretty. And 
What does it mean to me being your friend? It's going to be hard to be your friend now. <laughs> Nowadays, it would be the, the woman would say this creep, you know, and mm. call the cops. But it was very different reaction from her. Oh, nowadays mm. it'd be all over YouTube. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We haven't talked about uh, the card game. Oh, yes. oh. That, that that was that was got well, some, that was some so cute. Uh, cute. in there, and I, I don't know if it's integral or extra. I think it got prominence because of the again the epic convention that he was working against, which is is all battle sequences. Battle. I mean, this this man translated the Iliad and the Odyssey. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's right. uh, he's it's all about battles, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that was the battle. And, and of course, and he, he he likened it to that as well. I mean, those were sort of those were the metaphors he it used. It was kind of exciting, uh, actually, when you read it, especially if you could follow it, which it took me several readings to be yeah. able to follow. But, the thing. Uh, you know, she put <laughs> forth this card, but ha ha, I got a better one here. Yes, his <laughs> captured. I, Queen. Yeah. Was a, well, I it's so obvious because yeah. you win and lose at cards. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. very clear that it's a battle. Yeah, I didn't like it. I just thought he was, because he went on about the the, the, the different cards and mm -hmm. all this. I go, oh, well, geez. it might have been more meaningful if you knew that game. Well, yes. even so. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, I guess so. It's, I wonder if that game has survived. I wondered too. Ombre. Or it turned into something. Yeah. Or, or turned into yeah, something. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Are there any Maybe. games that only use 40 cards? I don't know. Right? No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. um, what about the other men? I mean, before we leave, the Baron is. What, what, what was your take on him? What was? You, you're kind of talking about it, but is there any other dimensions you could bring out that? I thought she'd be pull? lucky to get him. Okay. I, I mean, because he was, you know, he had a purpose, and he was going straight. She was flirtatious. All he was doing was trying to be a suitor. That's what I couldn't figure out. I, I couldn't figure out what's this guy's motive. Why does he want to do this? I mean, this is not going to endear him to this woman. Well, uh, maybe oh, it yeah, it is. It is really. This goes she's to show. just tease. She's a tease. You think so? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. She spends all her time. Oh, sure. Yeah. I think he read her wrong. If that's yeah. his intent. Do you? But the thing about her being open to his advances, advances was also that Ariel. The sprite had the sylph had to leave her because he looked into her mind and he saw that she wanted a man. Yeah, right. They were thinking about a lover a or something. Yeah. Yeah. and therefore he couldn't guard her anymore, and he had to leave her. And yeah, he saw it was a lost cause. He had other uh -huh. business. But yeah. who, so maybe she did like him a little. Maybe he was oh, the yeah. man who was that the man she liked. That's, because, I guess yeah, she I did play was, cards with him. Right? She played mm -hmm. cards with yeah. him and one other man. Yeah, two men and her. Yeah. Was that Sir I, I think he just blew it. <laughs> well, it, it, if he had done it right, I mean, if he's, yes. you know, he said, I would like something of yours, and lock it in your hair for my, do I keep next to my heart and then all this, she would have come along with yes. But he didn't do that. <laughs> maybe maybe it's just me, but somehow I, I maybe I just don't understand women. I mean, Freud said, you know, I don't understand women, uh, right? And I'm a psychiatrist, so I'm. Um, but uh, how is that supposed to endear you to a woman? I mean, to to, <laughs> to cut off a lock of her hair, it feels like an assault. It feels like a rape in the real sense to me. But, but maybe thought, I'm totally off But I really off of thought, it. though, that of if he could not have her, he he ultimately wanted her. But if he could not have her on the way to do that, he would take a lock of hair because at least he would have that. Then he could pursue it further if, you know, if she didn't kill him with the bodkin. <laughs> the, the, the question of his putting it in a ring to be displayed was, again, that was, to me, that was sort of, uh, of an ambivalent image or a, a desire on his part. Is it because he so values her that he wants, as you said, as you were saying, I, I, I you know, I, I think you're wonderful. To, I would like a lock of your hair. This is essentially an extension of that. He's going to display it, or is it a trophy? Mm -hmm. it, it's a spoil oh, of war. It was, yeah. it's, a, it's a spoil of war. So mm -hmm. it's a trophy in a sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not. It's not because of any intrinsic value That's that it I connects with her. Mm -hmm. I, th I got a different impression. I, I, I think Pope was trying to put it in those words, but I, I think that uh, uh, the Baron. And intent was to have it as a as a sign of their connection. Huh. So I, I looked at it more positively. Okay. But you can take it either way. Uh, before we leave the men in the story, there's Sir Plume who was asked to intercede to get the hair back, and he snuffs, he looks at his snuff box after he's asked, and 
and gets that out and then says, go away, you silly woman. <laughs> that, that was the weakest defense yeah. that any man could make. Yeah. You know, he's supposed to stand up for Belinda, right? Oh, it, I, I think he's, he's more of an it, ineffectual fop um, by his name, like Sir Plume. Or he was being realistic and saying, this is silly, you know, a piece of hair. So I don't know. I think you're right, though. That's mm -hmm. Sir Plume is great names. Yeah, that is. But he was supposedly based on a real character, too. Yeah, well. Right, who was supposed to come to Belinda's aid. I, I wonder if in the real story he was as useless. Well, wasn't it interesting? Wasn't wasn't he um, Clarissa's interest? What I thought that, or, or yeah. was it the It was it was yeah. Clarissa. So or Clarissa. Oh, yeah. was it the? I couldn't. The which one was one. it? Is it the other one? The other uh, the, one. Okay, yeah. her friend. It was her friend. Yeah, her friend's yeah. Uh, male interest. Okay. Let me change the subject a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's quite a bit in here about the sprites and the different ogres and all that, mm -hmm. and. Um, it seemed Pope make a real point of saying that Belinda and, and other women of that period were just empty-headed, and anything they did was due to the sprites' action on them. But what do you think he was trying to say? Was it a, little fairies running in and out their ear, filling up their mind? Yeah, they pushed their little on. empty mind. I think it was just a way of him telling what was going on in her mind. Because like the, the one that flew off and said, hey, this is not going to go anywhere. We know that she's going, has fallen for him and I have, you know, I can't be around here anymore. So it, they were all, it was just thoughts from her mind. How else is he going to put it down? I thought it was just a vehicle. I thought it also could have been the social conventions of the time, that this is the way women acted because the sprites made them do it, but also because of the peer pressure around and the social conventions mm. that made them act this way. And you could, if you did something, you could say, oh, the fairy made me do it. I, I yeah, understood I that the sprites controlled everything, including yeah. men. Yeah, I, did, I didn't think it was restricted it was just, to women. Uh, yeah, it uh, was, fate was out of our hands, and it was right. in the hands and, of the sprites. And nature. The, and nature. There was a whole yeah. part there right. where the sylphs we're in control of nature and the wind right. and the planet. A bag of wind. Yeah. Queen of the fact that you said that the fact I think you had said that that or somebody had said that that he added the sylphs uh, in as yeah. the as the poem evolved later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I I thought he had to, he had again it was it was that um, uh, damning by faint praise in a sense uh, that he had to, he had to bring in another another convention that is the the the, yeah. the gods. I mean in the in the Iliad again he translated the Iliad in the Iliad. I mean, the gods are all taking sides, and they're all intervening more for the more different seasoning for yes. the epic. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he trivialized them. They're these little, essentially, essentially powerless. I mean, they—they're certainly not gods. They certainly can't bend. Yeah, but they do all kinds of things that you think it's you who's doing it, but it's controlled by them. Yeah, that w but which which you didn't see that in here. Right. I mean, right? I mean, let, it, let it, me yeah. interrupt because yeah. we're yeah. kind yeah. of running out of, sure. uh, of time mm -hmm. here. Just what do you think of this? I, I had a. Kind of a negative opinion. I'll get into in a minute. But just what, what did you of the of the poem of the of experience the poem, of yeah. the poem? I thought it was Monty Python. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that have been great. Yeah, I, I really thought oh, that it was my. the Ministry so of Silly Walks was in here somewhere. Yeah. Absurd. <laughs> uh, the hyperbole was just oozing out all over. Um, and when you look at the individual actions, they're just blown up out of um, into such proportion. Yeah. I think it's great. What about you, Wood? Okay, I. I really, really liked it. I had to, I was reading it, and then I thought, this is going to be better if I can do it the way that it is, that if you, if you read it out loud, mm -hmm. we had gone through those things before. I loved it. Mm -hmm. And I did not think I would at all. I read it aloud too. And did maybe you really? the, isn't that amazing? It's fun. It's great. Yeah, Very, I know. It's fun. I thought it was fun because it was a poem. And yeah. I thought if it was a story, it wouldn't have had the same impact, the, mm -hmm. the same sense of funness. Yeah. I didn't like it at all. I, partly, it was like, like it kind of, I found it sophomoric. <laughs> partly, and partly, I was very irritated about the, 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 the format as having couplets where, where it all rhymed at two, two, uh, two by two, each mm -hmm. one rhymed, and the, each one had ten syllables, and 
And I go, oh, geez, why did he ever, you know, maybe that was you claim it uh, for your life, then it, it just becomes so hilarious, I think. Yeah, maybe so. I read that someone said it was a formal poem about a formal society. And maybe that was part of making fun of this formal society to write this formal poem. But that's also the, but that's also the convention of, of the epic poem. Yes. I mean, that's, how, that's how he translated the Absolutely. Iliad was, and it was an iambic pentameters. Mm -hmm. So he had to do it. But it worked so well because it was a formal society. Mm -hmm. Yes. Joe, do you want to have the last word? Which you like um, I, my, my first, uh, the uh, I, I, I found I found the form um, a little bit. Uh, it, I, I, read, I read it twice. I had, had two different impressions. The first time I found the form uh, um, impeding. Maybe I should have read it out loud. But I found it impeding, mm -hmm. um, but not irritating, but impeding. Um, and I didn't get a lot, even though I had the notes. I didn't get a lot of it, and I didn't enjoy it that much. The second time I read it, I thought it was a hoot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but uh, and and the form at that point just kind of passed me by. So yeah. okay, so we have yep. four against one. So that's, that's, that's <laughs> three and a half. 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 Okay, More so like that's probably. Uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Yeah. We'll get you on another one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, uh, it was interesting to talk about at least and so I, that I enjoyed um, as we take things like the form uh, into our modern age which we're supposed to do in a great books format is you, you kind of why I mean yeah it was popular at the time but then you, if it impedes now if it uh, makes it silly uh, I, I have a hard time with that part of it so it's interesting to see um, modern poets work, try to work in these kinds of forms. Yeah. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you all. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. Join us next time as we discuss another great selection. As Aristotle said, the best way to learn is to get together in small groups and discuss great ideas. <laughs>